Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be covering the cylinder primitive in OpenSCAD. Here I have shown a whole bunch of representations of the cylinder command that we're going to work through. But However, before we get started, I have to talk to you a little bit about something called uh, face numbering. Uh, you see that it represented here. In this example, I have uh, these objects listed and there's two things you need to know. One is I have a special utility that's spacing them out. So these commands as they're shown here would normally all end up here uh, at the origin, but my special command uh, stack separates them out by five, and that's just simply for the tutorial so it's easier to see. Um, then you'll also see that I have set fn equals 25, and that's to make the cylinder actually look like a cylinder. Um, you, you can see that it's overridden in some cases here, here, and below, and you'll see that those don't have that, that same number of face numbering. And I'm going to jump to a different copy of OpenSCAD to kind of give you an understanding of face numbering because you need to understand that from going forward from here. So here I have another copy of SCAD open and I'm going to show you two things. Um, one is a cylinder. First we'll do cylinder FN equals. Let's just draw these first. So you see I have one cylinder in the center here with five faces. Uh, they're called, it's called, uh, I'm sorry, facets. They're called facets because the top of this is also a face, um, but we're not adding to that. And that's the case with a sphere where the two polar ends aren't, aren't faceted in the default setting. So let's change it to FN equals 25 with a semicolon to end the command line. And you see now it's, now it's more representative of a, of a cylinder. And this can be any positive integer. Um, really up to 100 is, is you don't want to go you don't need to go much beyond that so let me show you how it, so say I want one cylinder to be uh, faceted at 25 but I want another specific one to be at a lower first let me translate this over don't worry about the translate command for now because we'll be teaching that later we we'll just know that we're going to use that in this case so this translates it over on the x-axis by two by two units and let's change the face numbering or facet number I'm going to say that wrong a lot so I apologize uh, let's change the facet number in, the, in, in this case or, uh, to, let's just do 8. And you'll see, so now we have one cylinder that's uh, defaulting to 25 based on the value here, and one that's set to 8 based upon its internal scope. So this is only, only affects this cylinder. So let's, for example, let's add one more so you can see that. So just keep in mind this the face numbering changes the the or facet numbering changes the uh, nature of the cylinder. So really the cylinder should be uh, I think maybe called a geometric polygon prism or something like that. So with that in mind, let's go back to our main example and work through them. So I would encourage you to open a copy of of, of uh, OpenSCAD and make each one of these changes as I go along. Uh, make your SCAD match uh, the changes. Don't try to do all of them at once, but just do one at a time. So let's look at the second one here. And this is uh, identical to the first in that this just creates a cylinder that's one unit high and one unit in radius. The third one has uh, an additional feature in that it recenters the cylinder um, along its length. So all cylinders are going to be centered along their axes. But by default, they're not, so if we look at the first one, their, um, their base is on the XY plane or whatever origin they happen to sit at. So you see that's the case here, but when we translate, when we get to the third one, we see that its, or its center now is um, its height, the center of its height or its length is, at, is centered on the plane. So that's how the cylinder centers. So now let's look at this third, fourth one, and you'll see I have two values here, and that's gonna be height and the first radius. You probably won't use this a whole lot, but it's gonna demonstrate what, what, what happened. So let's change the height first, and you'll see that it's gotten taller by two um, with the radius, with its overall radius remaining at one. That's because R1 and R2, you see them down here, are defaulted to one. If we change this value to two, we're only changing one radius, and you see now that we have a we have a conical section. So that leads us to the example number five, where if we change, we can change the height to two. We can change the low, the bottom radius to one, 
and you see it, now we have the same conical section now we, and now we can change the upper radius to two so this is this is probably the shorthand version you're going to use for a lot of things um, if you want to be explicit we can move on to example number six so example number six which is here shows us a, a, a cone with or no, I'm sorry that's, that's oh yeah that's here so you see our bottom radius is two and let's change that to one so you can see which one's affected you see the lower and let's just change this to two so you can see that the upper radius is going to be affected so you can see how we can explicitly change those um, the value that that gives us is one we know exactly which one is and let's uh, let's swap them around so we can see so I'm going to put the radius two first and you'll see there's no change even though after I compile and if I change the lower radius it'll change the lower so this this creates a situation where you don't have to depend on on inherently knowing the order so this this uh, seventh one here is really identical to this but it shows it shows the cylinder with a height of 10 and here's where they start getting interesting so this is actually a cylinder you say no it's not it's a, a prism or a, uh, or extruded triangle um, and that's what a cylinder is it's basically a, a prism with facets and this just this cylinder that looks like a cylinder it just has more facets so you'll see here I have a uh, triangle with with a height of two and a radius of two you'll see the difference here is that I don't have the indicator as to which radius so when you don't have an indicator it applies it to the lower and upper radius or the two ends are applied equally so you can see if I change this to three it just gets bigger it doesn't taper and you'll see the same thing is true when I move to my five-sided uh, prism or my uh, you see the same thing is true I've, I have a single radius indicator so R equals one and I have a face facet numbering of five so I can change this to six and you see now it's six a six-sided prism or seven and I'm sorry if I use any of these geometric terms incorrectly I'm not a geometry wizard now these final three, ex three examples are where I th or I think it gets really interesting and let's just change these to two and one so we can see them and I think this is where where you can start to see that you can do a lot with the cylinder um, and not have to make a complex print complex primitives with uh, with like a point cloud or whatever so here we have sort of a pyramid shape here a truncated pyramid maybe I don't know there's probably an official name for it but like I said I'm not a geometry wizard and you can see here's a, here's a five-sided tapered uh, shape here and and uh, and seven-sided so we can change we can control each radius separately as you saw I was doing so if we wanted to make this tapered in the opposite direction you could also do that by rotating it or just bigger and we can also change the height so uh, in this case I don't have height but I can add that by with h equals 10 and I think I could also just put put a value in because I think the first position without without a indicator is going to be presumed to be height let's check if I'm right yeah so when when you don't have the indicator it's going to default to the uh, or press order of operations that are inherent so um, I encourage you to go through and play with these and so you understand uh, you know the power of the of the cylinder it really is much more than a cylinder um, and if you like these videos make sure you subscribe and click on the alarm so you can be notified of new ones and uh, keep an eye out I'm going to be doing the sphere next so have a great day